Welcome to another episode of Dan Factoids, in which we respond to questions we receive from divers, diving instructors, instructor trainers, and other stakeholders in the diving industry. And I'd like to read to you a question that we received because it's quite a complex one and addresses a number of issues. The question was as follows. We have a guest that has come to us with the following symptoms. The individual has been doing two dives every day for the past week and with these dives being in the region of 24 meters with the longest being 78 minutes, she has been taking Valoid for seasickness in the morning before every dive and hasn't been exercising although she is very fit and healthy. She has suffered from severe migraines as well as visual disturbances that include blurred vision and dizziness after the dives and throughout the rest of the day. She doesn't feel this during the dives. After talking extensively to this individual, the instructor says that it was identified that the individual was skip breathing, in other words, holding her breath for about three seconds before exhaling, which would have contributed to the headache. Could we please explain the process of the headache and what the results would be and how this migraine or headache relates to the care that this individual should follow? And how would we respond to such a case through Dan? This is a far-reaching question that touches on a whole number of issues. There's the issue of the individual taking medication, Valoid, for seasickness, which is known to be sedating. There's the aspect of the symptoms being less while being underwater. There's the issue of migraine symptoms that include visual disturbances. Now many people refer to headaches as migraine, but migraine has very specific criteria of which visual disturbances and aura are a significant part. And there has been skip breathing. The individual, although returning to the surface and not exercising, has had residual symptoms throughout the day and that clearly is not normal. So I want to answer this question in a number of ways. Firstly, there's the issue of seasickness. We advise individuals that are prone to seasickness to rather take medication if they have severe seasickness the night before with Phenagan or Promethazine and of course this, this is not telemedicine you need to consult your diving medical practitioner or primary health practitioner for prescription or, and advice on this but we would rather advise people to take Phenagan or Promethazine the night before and the next day no longer have the sedating effects but still have the protection related to seasickness. That will take away the issue of psychomotor involvement while diving and possibly the effect or compounding effect of nitrogen narcosis. The second aspect is that this individual was skip breathing. Now it's never a good idea to hold your breath while diving. In fact, it's one of the first things we teach divers. Never hold your breath. But the headache that occurs as a result of skip breathing is typically a throbbing headache and is not associated with visual blurring or symptoms that continue throughout the day. And I have significant concerns that the migraine attacks may be something that requires further investigation and it may be wise to seek the advice 
of a diving medical practitioner because this may actually be evidence of a large patent foramen ovale. I don't want to scare the individual who posed the question or uh, raise it above the level of, of significance that it deserves, but migraine is associated with a patent foramen ovale and bubbles transferring either through the heart or even through the lungs. And this individual might consider more conservative diving or diving on nitrox as air, which is a safer thing to do. Lastly, we certainly would not advise an individual to continue diving even if the diving improves the headache. Migraine responds to an increase in PO2. In other words, a true migraine may actually improve during diving. This does not mean that you should dive to treat your migraine. It does explain why diving might improve the migraine. But my bigger concern is that the very fact that this individual develops migraine may represent an underlying risk factor to developing serious decompression illness. Please advise this individual to seek the advice of an experienced diving medical practitioner. Thank you so much for posing these questions. They're so important for us to consider and to have the opportunity to actually share with a broader diving population. We'll soon be entering the holiday season and we want to encourage all our members, all the divers at large, and in fact anybody watching this video, to please be vigilant, be responsible, look out for other individuals, and let's build a culture of safety together. That is what Dan is all about. Thank you for supporting and encouraging us by the questions you ask. Subscribe to this channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter and all the other social media. Call the hotline and keep those questions coming. We enjoy the opportunity to respond to them. Safe diving. Indian.